Metal Jesus, I'm back again to show you some of the retro gaming magazines I've added to my collection over the last couple months. Now that includes the classic PC Gamer magazine. I'm gonna show you a bunch of classic PC games and stuff like that, I love this magazine. And some surprises, including Nintendo Fun Club News. Now, for those of you that don't know, this actually predates Nintendo Power. They created the first seven of these before changing the name. And so this is pretty hard to find and kind of unusual and full of really interesting stuff. What I love about these old magazines is that there's such an insight into what was going on in the video game industry at that time. It's so much more interesting than reading, like say, a Wikipedia article. They're full of ads for games that you may have forgotten. There's, there's editorials about video games and the video game industry. There's even technical knowledge in there that you may have forgotten about Windows and all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty cool. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's take a look. I want to start off by showing Joystick Magazine from 1983. The important thing to notice here is that back in 1983, a lot of people were playing their games in arcades. And so this magazine is dedicated completely to ramping up your score at the arcade. And it's got some really cool tips in here for playing the original Star Wars game, as well as the original Dragon's Lair, how to beat some of the more difficult stages. Now this magazine didn't completely ignore consoles. In the very back, it had a couple pages dedicated towards reviewing games for the Atari 2600. You see a review there for Porky's. And then finally, there is an ad for an upcoming exciting new game by the band Journey. I remember this game well. It actually had a cassette that played one of their songs. And uh, yeah, pretty cheesy. Here's a 1983 issue of Electronic Games magazine. And what I love about this is in the very front, there's a news article about the Vectrex. You never hear about the Vectrex. And they're talking about some upcoming accessories for it, including the light pen and 3D imager. So it's cool to see some Vectrex love back in the day. Now here's an old ad for the Commodore 64. And down in the corner, you'll notice it says, I adore my Commodore 64. And back in 1983, Yes, I did. Here's an ad for a really obscure Sierra game. I had never heard of this. This was obviously before they pretty much just cranked out adventure games. So this was kind of a surprise to see. Pretty neat. Love to get a copy of it. Here's an ad that you don't see often. And these were really bizarre, double-ended Atari 2600 games. And uh, kind of sought after now. But uh, one of the really cool things is that they release a Chuck Norris game called Chuck Norris Super Kicks. Here's an old issue of Computer Gaming World with a classic Sierra game on it, Dagger of Amon Ra. And in this magazine, there's a really interesting article about video game companies and their stock prices. There's Sierra, of course, in here, and also Electronic Arts and some others. And just out of curiosity, I looked up what would have happened if you would have bought a thousand dollars worth of shares of electronic arts well over time it'd be worth about eight thousand so not a bad return here is issue number five of the nintendo fun club news which eventually became nintendo power and on the cover here they're highlighting rc pro-am a classic and deeper in the magazine you get some tips and tricks for playing goonies 2 the legend of zelda and also the notorious Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Also, there's a hilariously bad ad for Contra. <laughs> look at those guys, they look cheesy as all hell. Here's PC Gamer Magazine, and in here is a one of my favorite ads for a game called Homeworld. Love just the look of this game, and that was actually a screenshot, so beautiful. And then here's an ad for a role-playing game called Knox. And I always love this fold-out ad that they had here. I don't know why, it just, it just kind of spoke to me. Now here's a review for one of my all-time favorite PC games, System Shock 2. I love, love, love this game. If you haven't played it, well, what the hell's wrong with you? Go out and play it, it's awesome. And uh, what's this final score that they gave it? Eh, they gave it a 95. 
a little low, you know, could have been higher, but that's all right. Still a classic. Here's a funny ad for Alien vs. Predator. Great game, really funny ad. Has all three of them on the mating game and uh, trying to compete for the love of the lady. Here's an ad for an upcoming game called Diablo. I have a feeling it's going to do well. Sometimes you find articles about really weird accessories like this diamond gyro mouse. I don't know what that is, but I don't know if it's legal. Here's an old issue of the official PlayStation magazine. Cool to see some PlayStation 1 games here. Including an article for the Sega CD conversion of... Lunar, Silver Star Story. It's pretty wild to see an article about this fairly kind of obscure RPG. And then you flip the page and there is an ad for the classic Breath of Fire 3. Further on in the magazine, there's a preview for an upcoming shoot 'em up called Einhander. Man, this is a classic. Such a great game. Really fun to see this in a magazine. And then finally at the very end, there's a fairly in-depth uh, I guess walkthrough uh, with maps for Resident Evil 2 and this just goes on page after page after page it's incredibly in-depth here's a really cool ad for one of the classic first-person shooters back in DOS days Shadow Warrior holding a the heart there you no mess with the low wang here's an ad for a role-playing game that's coming to the PC soon and that is Final Fantasy VII. I actually bought this on the PC, but I was never able to finish it because of some bugs. It was so annoying. Now, speaking of RPGs, here's a classic called Arcanum, which was part steampunk and part D&D. &D. Really fun. And then we have an article for an upcoming service that Valve is building called Powerplay. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because this ultimately became Steam. So that's just some of the retro magazines I've picked up in the last couple months. I have tons more, so if you like this video, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to do more of them. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thank you for subscribing. Take care.